Deputy, I call Deputy. Sorry, Deputy Higgins. We show respect for your leader here, Deputy McGrath. Thank you. Show respect for your leader. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good the public aren't going to be fooled any longer. And I compliment the Irish Independent in raising these scandalous, disgraceful events of the last, the last few days in relation to the revelations about Anglo-Irish Bank and the massive public deception that members of senior manage management have perpetrated upon the Irish people since September 2008 onwards, right up to this day, and indeed for generations to come. The BBC, Taoiseach, and the whole world are discussing what's going on here in Ireland. And the saying is one of shock, verging on nausea, and teeth grinding anger. I think, Taoiseach, that's putting it very mildly indeed. You yourself have said, Taoiseach, that you understand the rage and upset of the Irish people. Indeed, that you can appreciate the anger that is out there. I very much wonder, Taoiseach, after your replies here to the last number of questions. You also said that the government wants to make sure its promised new legislation to hold a banking inquiry will be suffi sufficiently comprehensive. That says a lot. Yet a spokesperson for the Department of Public Enterprise and Reform, which is sponsoring the inquiries bill, said that under the terms of the Rochester's inquiries, it would not be empowered to make findings of individual culpability. They would only be able to inquire into the facts surrounding the banking collapse. Is this what you, you mean, sufficiently comprehensive? Why, Chief, can you not refer to or cannot the authority refer to the Criminal Justice Theft and Fraud Offences Act 2006, which is on the statutes? Plenty of articles there. You know, people who, who act dishonestly are to set out to, to mislead. They're all there to be acted with already. Why the cover up, Tisha? Why the delay? We must have individual culpability. We must disregard the nonsensical pleadings of senior management that they were not party to any strategy to mislead the central bank when we have it in their own words that they set up set upon and deliberately and recklessly deception that has cost this country and its people dear, Tisha. We all know that, the dogs in the streets too. The Tarnish has said that he has no idea the tapes existed of senior figures discussing the bank uh, rescue fund and the subsequent bank guarantee. How credible is this, Tisha? We all know that all our conversations on a daily basis are recorded with all banking institutions. Are we to seriously believe that five years into the fast, not one person in government taught to ask, was there any uh, record of conversations during this crucial period? Surely the Minister of Finance sitting beside you, when he took up the job, he must have had discussions with senior manage management, I expect, with the bailed out banks. Thank you. Was he lied to as well as his predecessors and previous ministers? And what Taoiseach answers did he get? And did he ask the questions? And you might ask him, did he ask the question? And if not, why not? And was the Minister of Justice informed that these tapes existed? He seems to be informed of every other little triviality, so I'm sure he's informed about this. Yeah. Here, here. Taoiseach, here. do you agree with your parliamentary party chairman, uh, Deputy Charles Flanagan, that the Oireachtas is not the appropriate forum for this banking inquiry? Moreover, I would put it to you, Taoiseach, what we need is a short, a short, sharp commission of inquiry with no politicians involved, hand in hand with a robust criminal investigation, fully resourced and assisted uh, by police forces from abroad Thank if you. necessary. Thank you. So, Taoiseach, will you agree to take this course of action? on behalf of the public so many years later and all the election promises you made as well. Here, here. Sure. I, <coughs> I, I think you will remember the Fianna Fáil party yourself and all this went on. Obviously, you were very supportive of, you were very supportive of, what, of, of what happened then. Uh, I just want to say to you again, Deputy McGrath, Sorry, sorry, the please. tapes that are mentioned here uh, are tapes that were supplied to the Garda Shiakana over four years ago as part of their investigation into matters at, at Anglo-Irish Bank. And those investigations have led to a number of criminal charges being brought against individuals. And because the Garda are the, um, are the body responsible for criminal investigations in the state under statute, they were informed uh, of this kind of behaviour and um, that's why those uh, tapes uh, were directly into their possession from Anglo-Irish Bank under a warrant. Um, now you talk about a cover up here, my God almighty. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that following those investigations, criminal charges have been preferred against a number of individuals and that process is in train. I, I believe 
uh, that the legislation currently going through the Houses uh, will provide a, a process here for a parliamentary inquiry which can lead to the truth and uh, we start that process. Um, and far from being any, anything other than wanting to find out the truth about this, which the people demand and which they're entitled to and which they have been crucified economically for the last, uh, for, for, the, for the next generation because of what happened here. And we see the condescending way uh, that individuals have treated all this as a, matter, as a matter of fun and games. What we need to find out, Deputy McGrath, is the whole process of the lead-in to the, that culture and that environment of hail fellow well met, we're all part of this process, keep our rolling, keep those high mortgages going out, keep prices inflated, look after the builders, look after the developers, look after the bankers, all on the same axis. We, we know very little about that, uh, Deputy McGrath, and that's why, that's why the, uh, the, the issue now of the legislation dealing with the parliamentary inquiry will start that process, and I'd like to see that uh, underway early in the autumn. And I hope we can def define a, a set of terms of reference here with a specific remit uh, that can, after all, in the public's interest, have accountability and truth brought to this matter to the greatest extent possible. The criminal law will take its own case in the, or take its own way in the courts. Deputy McGrath, one minute, thank you. Taoiseach, you're not answering any questions. Did the Minister of Justice know about the tapes or not? Taoiseach, welcome back from your globe-trotting six months European presidency. And Kogar, I guess, listen over. But you're back to the real world now, Taoiseach. And it's about time you took some responsibility for the inactions of your government and all the promises they made. The individuals in Anglo, as we know, are only second-rate guys. We need to know how many more scoundrels are lurking in the shady vaults of Anglo and indeed the banks, other banks including Bank of Ireland, AIB, permanent TSP. Taoiseach, every piece of legislation that's come in here has given a veto to the banks. Whether it's the, it's the, it's the situation with the mortgage crisis, uh, the government setting targets, the banks just dangy people on the string. Also with personal insolvency. Every item of it, the banks haven't been tackled head on. They've got a veto and everything. Who or what are you hiding? And you promised so much with disdain, especially Tarnish and Gilmore. And indeed, Minister Varadkar said, not one more red cent for Anglo. Do you does he remember that, I wonder? Do you think the people are complete idiots? Taoiseach, when the people were promised no more cuts and no more um, welfare, or no more cuts of welfare, or indeed increases, of savage attacks that you went back on today to the most needy in our society. The government went to the people. This government has elected here. You went to the people for a mandate. Could you and you said question? you need a vote you, to get us out of the mess we're in. The Anglo charade went to the central bank and said we need your vote to get it, uh, we need your money to get us out of here. They got the money for the last government, which I was a member of. I've never shied away from that. Could you I voted for question, it. I was duped also, Taoiseach. But you know, in hindsight, you were sitting there. You've done nothing about it either, are your Minister of Finance. Did he ask the questions? And if not, why not? Did the Minister of Justice know? And if he didn't, why didn't he know when he left to know about trivialities? Exactly. Here, here. Both of you, I believe, Taoiseach, both of you, I believe, Taoiseach, but the government and the banks have deceived the people. Both of you have broken promises. There has been no accountability on either side, Taoiseach, I put it to you. Thank and you. do you agree that it's high time there was such accountability? And will you set up, as I said, a, a, a criminal inquiry also with a, with a, with a, with a, with a robust investigation? No point bringing it back to the doctors. While we have powers of uh, compatibility, it won't be effective. Thank It'll you. be just another smoke screen, and the people won't wait for that. We can wait. Time has passed, Taoiseach. Will you do what you've been asked to do and do what you're elected to do? The mandate you got, Taoiseach, is to uh, sort this mess out and deal with it and bring honesty and truthfulness to the, to the people. Thank you, Taoiseach. I agree with your last comment about honesty and truth here. Um, it, when, when you, it's been a privilege, actually, Deputy McGrath, to uh, have been Keeper of a government which has dealt with the presidency of the European Union for the last six months. Uh, I just said this morning that the file on Horizon 2020 was agreed. Yesterday, the file on CO2 emissions was agreed. The Minister for Finance is working very hard tomorrow and tomorrow night on the question of bank resolution and bank recovery towards banking union, which is all part of this. And we hope that the discussions currently underway with the punished in respect of the MFF can lead to a conclusion on that. If you think that that's, uh, if you think that that's globe trotting, well then, well then you're, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. You know, Deputy, I, I had the, um, the doubtful privilege of uh, attending up at Anglo-Irish Bank myself. I went up there with, um, with uh, Deputy Bruton when he was um, spokesman on finance a couple of weeks after the guarantee went through. He met all of these principles up there on St. Stephen's Green in the building. Um, and had a, a wonderful presentation by people who were, were very well remunerated in their positions and received very large bonuses. 
Um, and all of that presentation was a tissue and a fabrication of untruths, uh, as, uh, as transpired. Um, and uh, and um, the questions, the questions that, that, that we asked on that occasion from, an, from the opposition benches uh, were very realistic in the sense of the pressure that people were under and the stories and the rumours and the allegations that were being and that were flying around about that particular <coughs> bank and they were all denied utterly. Um, I just make that point to you as, um, as um, um, you know, politicians who were interested in what went on here. Uh, so, so, Deputy McGrath, we're interested in finding out facts and truth here um, and we process the legislation through the Dáil and through the Shannon. We set up our parliamentary inquiry um, we define a set of terms of reference for that and we move on with getting accountability and the truth in the people's interest. And as I said to you, next year is a different story in the context of the, uh, uh, of the charges being brought against certain individuals which will be processed through the, the court system in its own way. Thank you. That completes uh, leader, leader's questions for today.